This show is a proud member of the Nerdy Legion Podcast Network. Get more at nerdylegion.com. Enjoy the show. This is Right Side Home Theater. Hey, home theater nerds, welcome to Brightside Home Theater Podcast, the podcast that focuses on the experience we have in our theaters. My name's DJ, and you can reach me on Twitter at BrightsideHT, or you can reach me by email, BrightsideHomeTheater at gmail.com, or you can always reach all of us, and I say all of us, all at the Brightside Home Theater community. You can re- reach us by leaving comments underneath at the website underneath either the episodes, which would be more for me, or the featured theaters, which is definitely for the people that put out those theaters for me, allow me to feature them, put themselves out there. They put a lot of time into these blood, sweat, tears, money, all of that, all of that effort. And let's compliment them or tell them exactly what you like. You took ideas. I've taken ideas from these theaters. So let them know what ideas you took from them or ideas you have for that theaters, because some of these theaters are actually still growing. Well, actually, they're all still growing. We're always adapting our theaters, always looking to upgrade. So comments under the featured theaters would be great. And you can do that at brightsidehometheater.com and just click on featured theaters. And there's a bunch more than I've 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 lost count, to be honest with you. We don't have one this week. But anyways, also, we are now on Patreon and you can support the podcast by going to Patreon, signing up to make a monthly donation, or you can just go to the website, brightsidehometheater.com and click on the big red button and it'll take you right to Patreon and you can sign up that way. Really easy. As little as a dollar a month, that's the smallest amount they'll allow, or you can do all the way up to infinity. Woohoo, that would be great. Uh, any amount greatly appreciated, but absolutely not required. Uh, I appreciate all of my listeners. Just something I thought I'd try to do, and it is growing. And look at us go. New Patreon supporters this week are Graham C., Andrew J., Carl R., and Brian M. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. And we are up to, I say we, it's me, but I am up to 11 Patreon supporters. Thank you very much. It's been like a week and a half that people have known about it and I'm already up to 11. Maybe I'm at 11 next week. That's fine too. Uh, But if anybody can donate, I really appreciate it. If not, don't worry about it. I completely understand. Also, we have new Twitter followers this week and our new Twitter followers are Dean Matthews, Michael Maddox, and Jason Kennedy. Thank you for joining on Twitter. Welcome to Brightside Home Theater. Take a look around. Make yourselves at home. And then let's move along. This week we have movies and scenes this week. We have News of the World. And that comes from JT on Twitter, at Brightside HT. Hi, DJ. Just watched News of the World on Netflix. Decent enough film, but thought the Atmos was amazing. The sound during the dust storm scene was out of this world, even on my relatively puny 7.1 system in my lounge. In a dedicated theater, it would be even better. I thought this was pretty funny, JT. Um, Relatively puny. 7.1? It's like because you don't have at you don't need Atmos. Everybody has said that 7.1 is not a relatively puny system. Actually, relatively speaking, that is a large system because there's not many systems bigger than that. You can get you can add a subwoofer and a few more speakers, but compared to most of the world, you're 7.1, you're up there. Because even a 5.1, most of the world doesn't have that. So relatively speaking, your system's cranking. All right, moving on. The next one is Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. Paul Stewart email, sent an email saying, another outstanding soundtrack. My God, every speaker is used literally all the time. Music is directed to the heights when effects aren't whizzing about. Highly recommended. I saw this one years ago. 
and I haven't seen this in a long time, but this sounds like a movie that's right up my alley because I love, I know it's not the greatest movie in the world, but I love movies that are just completely engaging and sound wise. It's just, just fun to be in the room. And it's like, so you don't have to pay attention to the story that well, but now I get to pay attention to all my speakers. And that's even more fun to me sometimes, a lot of times. Uh, <laughs> So next we get to listener comments, listener comments. First, we have an email from Carl. Carl sent an email from uh, about the Alamo draft house bankruptcy to refusing to play Disney and out the links to this will be in the show notes. I read this article. It's pretty cool. And it's a pretty cool way that everything is going on and all of the stuff that people are doing to try and survive out there, how the theaters are trying to survive. Highly recommend that article. The next article that he sent was about a new Sono speaker that just leaked. Uh, it looks like Chris Welch put out a uh, Twitter or he a tweet, sorry. And it says, this is the new Sonos Rome. And it's pretty cool looking. Uh, it looks like it's smaller and it's cheaper than it was before. It's going for $169. I'm really interested in this. My whole house is decked out in Sonos. So I would love to have these, especially for out by the pool. You'd be able to put them, you know, for 169 bucks, grab a couple of them and put them out in areas that I have outdoor speakers, but it would be nice to be able to move something around. The I think it, what's the other one called? The Sonos move i believe it is and that's like four hundred dollars i wanted to get one of those but those were hard to come by so but this new sonos is pretty cool i like it it looks like it's smaller i have a little i think it's a little bose one that looks like about this size but to be able to be integrated into my uh, sonos ecosystem it would be pretty cool uh the next article comes from uh he sent this carl sent this as well and this is the probably the article I recommend reading the most. It's very short. It comes from Lulu Wang. And she says, we can't be so individualistic that we lose these shared experiences in talking about going to the cinemas. And she, she mentions growing up in the United States. And when she first came here, she couldn't speak English. So she didn't get to go to the movies, but then as she got a little bit older, and when I say a little bit older, I I think if I remember right, she was like six years old and her parents were taking her to see Die Hard and she remembers that and loved it. But she loves the idea of the experiencing these movies as a community, as going to the movies and experiencing it with a group. And we need that. Because you, you got to read the article. I, I want it. I would love to get her on. I don't think I've seen any of her movies, but I just loved her because I, I don't think the genre is really for me. It's not the action and boom stuff, but she does like action movies. She and she I think the idea of that she was talking about with the art and everything of cinemas and just art in general. It, it, this article really spoke to me. I highly recommend this article please read it. It's, it's pretty short. As a matter of fact, when the article was over, I thought I wanted more. I was like, I need to hear more from her on this because it's, it, it's what, and like she says, I'm looking at the, um, if you're on YouTube and you see the, uh, the clip I have up here, the, the picture, and it says, it's like why art makes us human. And I'm not doing a good job explaining it, but that's why the article's there. And that's why the link is in the show notes. So definitely check that one out. So next we have BJ Horton on Twitter says you and Tom were hilarious. Ha ha. The whole time you read my message, I was, I saw him agreeing inside, but thinking you're giving these people two minutes of podcast time. Ba ha ha. So, uh, that was a tweet regarding last week's podcast with Tom Andre. And yes, Tom and I had an absolute blast. We had so much fun and we talked afterwards, even after we hung up, we, we talked, uh, we stopped recording, I should say. And we tweeted a, or texted each other a couple times. It's, there is a, a fun mix there between the two of us where I always see the bright side. It's just who I am. Even before I invented bright side home theater or bright side home chat, it's kind of my mentality. Like why deal with that? Where Tom, we're both sarcastic. We both like it. So I get his humor and I love his humor. 
I can't tell you how many emails and, and messages I've got this week saying what a great show, how there's so much fun, people laughing out loud, having to pull over because they were crying. Um, the mix between the two of us is just a lot of fun. I really enjoy having him on. And I know he's younger than me, but I kind of do look up to him in a way of a father figure. <laughs> I'm sure he'll love that. No, he's a blast. He's so much fun. So, all right, moving on. We have a tweet from Graham Cole at Brightside HT. Perfect timing. Just got the t-shirt and hoodie on my birthday. Thanks so much. And if you're looking on Twitter, it's a picture of Graham in front with his new Brightside home theater t-shirt on, which you can go to T Public and you can just search Brightside or search the link on my website. You can buy this merchandise all for yourself. Uh, I'm wearing mine today. I'll always wear mine. But anyways, Graham's in front of his subwoofer. I believe that's an SVS. I couldn't have been. I'm not 100% sure because for all I know, it's another brand. But he's in front of his subwoofer that won him the contest. So I put the contest out for District 9. He guessed the scene. My favorite scene of the year. I believe it starts at 12 minutes and 15 seconds. Go to that scene. If you hear the rumble, you'll know what we're talking about. Uh, but he guessed it right, and I didn't think anybody was going to get it, and he got it in a couple hours of me putting out the the challenge for all intents and purposes. So I sent him his T-shirt and his sweatshirt, and it showed up on his birthday. Happy birthday. I didn't say that in the tweet back to you, but happy birthday. Hope you had a great day. Thank you for participating, Graham, and uh, hopefully I'll be doing a few more of those. That was a lot of fun and uh, very surprising. Uh, so, so I, I didn't think anybody was going to get it. So way to go, Graham. Really appreciate that. All right. And that brings us to this week's featured theater. And we don't have a featured theater this week, but if you're on YouTube, this is the new graphic that we'll have as we go into new theaters. So from here, we are going to go into this week's movie, which this week's movie is Lord of the Rings, the two towers, Part one, you saw it in the title when you clicked on the podcast, but we have the lovely trailer to play. And if you're on YouTube, I'll actually have the trailer playing and you get to watch it there. A little bit more interaction on YouTube. So let's play this trailer and we'll uh, we'll come back and discuss Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, part one. A man and a dwarf, heaven the rid of mark. Speak quickly. We track a band of Urukai westward across the plain. They've taken two of our friends captive. Look for your friends, but do not trust to hope. It has forsaken these lands. We're lost. I don't think Gandalf meant for us to come this way. He didn't mean for a lot of things to happen, Sam. <laughs> Come back to you now, at the turn of the tide. Saruman's forces have begun their attack. He is using Saruman to destroy your people. They were unarmed. They had no warning. This is but a taste of the terror that Saruman will unleash. You must fight. I will not risk open war. Open war is upon you, whether you would risk it or not. A new power! rising. Its victory is at hand. There is an army bred for a single purpose, to destroy the world of men. You must lead the people to Helm's Deep. By order of the king, the city must empty. Where is she? The woman who gave you that jewel? The alliance between men and elves is over. Our time here is ending. Arwen's time is ending. Let her go. Where is it? Just tie him up and leave it. No! You know the way to Mordor. There will be no dawn for men. 
Bruno! It's taking hold of you. You have the gift of foresight. Tell me what you have seen. He is not coming back. The defenses have to hold. They will hold. There is nothing for you here. Only death. There is still hope. And we're back. So that trailer was a little bit longer than I expected, but hey, I mean, it, it had everything. And you know what else I liked about that trailer is it didn't have a lot of downtime for like uh, audio wise. There was a lot of good dialogue in there. So it, I think that was almost three minutes long. But if you're over on YouTube, you can watch the whole trailer play right there on the screen. So, but here we go. And if you're on YouTube, I will have pictures for pretty much everything, even if it's just the Lord of the Rings thing. But I took screen grabs this week uh, as I was doing my review. So these pictures are just taken with my iPhone as I'm doing my editing, just so that when you're watching on YouTube, there's a reference off to the side if I'm talking about something in particular. So first up, uh, let's talk about the picture and sound. Much of the same of last, like I said, last month. This is, it's just spectacular. The picture itself, the landscapes, that's what this movies, these movies are all about to me. It's whenever they're doing those sweeping shots around, you know, over the, the landscapes of if they're coming in with a helicopter or whatever, or a drone, maybe, maybe not a drone back then, but you know, seeing the characters running across a field or whatever it is, it is just absolutely gorgeous, stunning, beautiful. You, you can't have enough adjectives for it. It just looks great. The special effects suffer a little bit and i'll talk about one when i get to it in in my uh when we get to the popcorns popping you know when we get to the spoilers spoilers for a 20 year old movie but um but yeah this the special effects suffer a little bit because it's so good the the picture is so good that you can actually see a, some of the flaws but it doesn't detract from the movie because the picture is so good one of the things that i really liked about it about the picture is sitting down now it's March. This is my third time sitting down to do this. And when I came up with the idea to break this up into monthly things, a lot of people, even Jeff said last month, like, Whoa, you're doing one a month. Okay. Um, but if I did them all at once, I don't think I would have gotten the enjoyment that I got. Like even this month, it's been a while since I sat down and watched these and it just hits you after watching movie after movie and 4k looks great all the, all the time. But there are better versions, and this this is still the best version. Uh, I the other thing I've been watching is Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones looks really good in 4K as well. But when I threw in Lord of this Two Towers, it looked so good, and compared to everything else I've been watching, and you're just like, wow, it is a stunning picture. It's just amazing, and it's it's nice to have it broken up like this because when I sat down, I'm like. Yeah, it's nice to be back. And I'll get to do it again next month when I do the second half of Two Towers. And obviously we're dragging it out, but I'm really enjoying it. And I'm I'm glad I didn't binge it all at once and then do one big review because it's nice to come back to it and be reminded how good a picture can look. Uh, sound, spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Bass is, is unbelievable. There was a lot of things I could have been saying throughout this movie. Like I say, in all of the movies, like lots of great bass here. Lots of, there's a ton of scenes. I'm trying to break down scenes that maybe aren't, maybe you wouldn't find necessarily, unless it's an absolutely spectacular, stunning, um, sound scene or something, bass scene. So it's, it really is great, but here's the difference between this and the picture. There's a lot of movies out there and, and some of them are just on Blu-ray with great Atmos tracks. So I don't think the sound stands out as much as the picture does. Uh, this is absolutely a box set that you need to own or you need to own these movies as a home theater fan, I believe, because it's just it just shows how good the picture is. And when you, you put that with an absolutely stunning sound as well, it's just the combination of the two is there isn't another set out there. There isn't another movie out there that is to me, that is this good yet. Hopefully we're getting there. 
So with that, let's get that popcorn popping. And you can hear that going in the background right now. And then from here, we will get to what we always get to. The opening. Uh, the opening here, sound-wise, was relatively mild. Just a uh, beautiful score playing as we fly through the mountains. And it looks really nice. Uh, really, really nice. The detail, the colors, the feeling was just, it was almost 3D. The pictures I have here just don't do it justice. It's not a fair representation. Um, I just, you know, I snapped these pictures, but to give you an idea of what I'm looking at, but it what it looked so nice. And like I just said a few minutes ago, it really just brings you right back to the world that I, that I was in a month ago where you're like, wow, it doesn't take long. It's like, bam, you're just into it right away and how good these pictures look and how good these mountains look. And then from there, we go right into the, the, uh, scene with Gandalf, the standoff from fellowship. It's a flashback kind of scene that you shall not pass. That's at 147. Um, and we're, we're brought right back to there with great base, great contrast in the picture, just really, really just gets you going again. And then w this is where the movie picks up. And then at 243, we get the fall. Gandalf gets pulled down and the sound is amazing. A constant vibrating bass all the way down that you can end up taking for granted as there's so much more going on audio wise. Your room is just completely engaged. There's scraping sounds going on on each side of your room. And if you listen closely at times, it sounds like the scraping is going down, like from ceiling to floor, but it's it's really not. It's It's more, I believe it's more of a, like it's a, your brain playing a trick on you because you're just so engaged into this scene and it's just the entire room is engaged, but you're engaged because you're seeing what you're seeing on the screen and it, you have to imagine that you're falling with him. Even the overheads are getting a decent workout because of the whole room is going and you, you don't get the discrete sounds that you would get from your overheads, but every speaker in your room is working here. And then at the end of the scene, when it cuts away to Frodo and Sam, we get another transition at, that's really, really like a nice dark, dark, yeah, a nice bass thump there when they go right to Frodo and Sam. And it's another great transition, by the way, of picture wise, where it's relatively warm when the scene we had with Gandalf fighting. And now we go to a cooler picture of Frodo and Sam. And that, that was really, really cool. I like, I mean, I talked about that a lot in the last, when I did uh, part one of fellowship. So I, I really liked that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Six minutes and 10 seconds. We get directional thunder. And I gave this two boxes of popcorn, super subtle thunder, but it, as subtle as thunder can be really, because what we get here is they're they're coming up the Sam and Frodo are coming up the mountain and they see Mordor off in the distance and you can hear the thunder at the front of your room and you don't even notice it it's like that's where it's supposed to be right but then as the as the the frames go on or as the movie goes on you move over the screen goes to a shot of looking at Sam and Frodo and now Mordor is behind you and if you listen closely, you can hear the thunder moves to being behind you because now Mordor is behind you. Really, really cool. And a little bit of a detail there that I just, I absolutely love. And you guys know, if you've been listening for a while, you know, I love details like this when they take the time to do this because people like it, the only people that get this are us and we're the small minority. So they're the only, we're the only ones that get to hear it because you're not going to get this on a sound bar and you're not going to get this on, never mind a TV with just its regular speakers. So after that, I love those scenes. Absolutely love those scenes. This is a great example of that. And that is at six minutes, 10 seconds. I could, gave it directional thunder, two boxes of popcorn, but alrighty, let's move along here at nine minutes and 18 seconds. We have Gollum on the rocks. Uh, the detail here, it's like, it's so great. And he, it, he doesn't really fit though. All right. So it starts out when you look at this scene here and he's on the rocks, 
it looks really nice. The picture that I have up on YouTube right now, it's he looks really nice, but if you look closer, it doesn't really work. The shadows where his hands would be going down don't work as well. And then when he gets down the rocks and he's interacting with Sam and Frodo, check out the color on them, the highlights on them. They're wrong. It's like, I, I can't remember. I think it's, I think it's cooler here and his highlights are warmer or vice versa. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it happens throughout the movie. This is the only time I'm going to really, really break it down. But it, he, it, this is where I was talking about where it just doesn't work. It, it's the, the picture is so good that Gollum is like, it, it just doesn't, it looks like as my, my son put it, he said, it's uh what's the term? It's, um, uh, augmented reality. That's what it was. My son said it. He goes, it looks like augmented reality because it like when you use your phone to look at stuff, it looks like that, you know, it's not perfect. It doesn't have the right shadows. It doesn't have the correct highlights. It, it just doesn't match. Uh, there is a scene coming up where I thought Gollum was done so well that it actually made it better, made the scene better. So we'll get to that. So this is the one negative I'll talk about. It happened. You'll see it throughout the movie. But it doesn't take away from the movie at all. I just thought I'd mention it. It'd be crazy not to. All right. Uh, next scene is at 17 minutes and seven seconds. Caught their scent. And this is Aragorn is listening, tracking the orc. And we've just come out of a thunderous scene as the orcs are trampling the earth. But as this scene here, we can see that the or feel that the orcs are trampling the ground but the volume of base is lessened. Okay, so what happens is, is we have the orcs trampling the ground and your room is vibrating and everything's going crazy and that's great. And that's, you know, if it's your first time to home theater, that's going to be spectacular. But for us, what I liked was when the scene shifts to Aragorn listening to the ground, all of a sudden the volume went away. Your room isn't as loud, but you can still get that feel. I still had that feel in my seat. I felt that in my body that you could, feel the orcs trampling the ground that is awesome to be able to and we'll, i've talked about it many times with different movies but i love when they do that because that's that effect that we've you hear over on av rant where people are like oh i put in two subwoofers and now it doesn't work as well yeah because you're not playing loud you're playing low you don't need loud you need accurate and you're getting a more accurate reading here where you're getting exactly what you're supposed to get. It's not just about loud. You're not supposed to be blowing your eardrums out. You're supposed to feel it. They have that visceral feel. And this is one of those scenes. I gave it one box of popcorn for that. This is one of those scenes that really demonstrates that. I really, really enjoyed that. At 20 minutes and five seconds, rule this middle earth. And that this here is the picture leading up to this is another great example of HDR and how the smoke and clouds differ from the blackest shadows. It's a real cool 3D effect. And it's basically you're looking at Mordor, the eye of Mordor and all of that. And the, the clouds are black, but there's grays in there. And it's just a great, great look. Great picture. And I, I'm lo I love that atmospheric look, too, that you can get that the different effects of gray that you can feel like I talked about in predator. Uh, there's multiple thuds that shake your whole house as trees are dropped. Cause this is, we go back underground and there's, it's just a great visceral feel to go along with the crystal clear dialogue of Saruman. So this scene here, it just, it plays out, but it's like those trees dropping everything that's going on down there. And then Saruman crystal clear on the screen or attached to the front of the room to your screen. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have at 28 minutes and 40 seconds, it's the trees. And this is Merry and Pippin are on the ground surrounded by orcs. And you can hear the chopping of the trees all around your room. Very distinct too. Tree sounds, even when there isn't, even where there isn't a speaker. All right. So like, it, it just was like very clear and very crisp. And the, the scenes actually it shifted back and forth between just looking at them and you'd hear the sounds around the room or you would go to actually the orcs chopping down the trees. But it was just such a crisp sound, a, a crisp like impact 
of those axes hitting the trees. And then when they pulled away and you just, and you were hearing it ambiently around your room, there were trees going and I'm looking and I'm like, I don't have a speaker there. I don't have a speaker over there. It was a really, really nice scene. And at the crispness of those, those sounds was what really, really grabbed me on that one. Uh, the next scene is 3702, Hands Were Bound. This is a really fun scene for audio. This scene flips back and forth from Aragon tracking Merry and Pippin and describing what happened to the actual scene of what happened. So you have Aragon looking at the ground. He's searching around to see what they did, and he's looking through all the grass and everything, and he's describing what happened. But then the scene flips over to now you're seeing it's nighttime, and it's Merry and Pippin trying to get away. And the the blending of this of these two scenes was really cool. Uh, the deep bass wishing past you as the scenes changed, so you get and it was some of them were even behind you. Uh, the crispness of the horse's footsteps as the hobbits are trying to escape. A lot of fun. Nice crisp bass here too. But the blending of the two scenes and like I said, that that wisping that went past you was really it was like took over the overheads were engaged there it was just a really nice scene at, and that's at 37 minutes and two seconds hands were bound uh the next scene at 41 44 the white wizard this is a quick one but this is the first time i saw this scene look this good and i, I mean i've seen this movie pretty much every year since i since the movie came out on blu-ray or dvd or whatever and I remember this scene being more like, all right, that was pretty cool. But when I watched this, I couldn't wait to do an AB on this. Like I said, this is a 40, at 41, 44, the white wizard. We know the scene. This is where um, uh, Merry and Pippin see Gandalf back. He's back. But I was blown away because the right side of my screen was like just lit up but tons of detail, lots of white coming off the screen. Very vibrant looking without any loss of detail. And I couldn't wait to AB this with the DVD, with the Blu-ray. So I have the, the extended version on Blu-ray and I AB'd it. And if you're on YouTube, this is what it looked like on the Blu-ray. And you can see it's, it's not as vibrant. It's a little bit more grayed out compared to this being now I'm showing again the 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 4k version and the greens in the moss and everything in the 4k version was just more realistic, more vibrant. Whereas on the 1080p, it just seemed more grayed out. But what isn't evident here, if you're on YouTube is when you go back and forth, the vibrancy of the picture of the brightness coming off of Gandalf isn't the same or it is the same actually here on YouTube. But when you experience it live and you go back and forth between these two scenes, it, it is, it's actually very big difference. The, the light coming off the screen in the 4k version of Gandalf on the right side of your screen is so bright, but there is zero loss of detail. And when you, when you put in the 4k or the 1080p version, it, it's just subdued big time. You have pretty much all the same detail, the, his white robe, his white hair. You still can see basically all the same strands, all the, the fur on, or the, the texture of the, of the robe all looks the same. But when you're looking at it in the 4k with the HDR, it's just, it's, it's hard to look at. It's so bright. It, what a big difference. Definitely check that one out. 41, 44, I'm actually, I didn't put any popcorn boxes here, but I'm going to add a couple of popcorn boxes to this because I've talked about it for so long and it is so important, but it is, uh, I'm going to give it two boxes of popcorn just to show what a big difference this is between 4K and 1080p. If you have both versions and you can AB pretty quickly, it's definitely worth doing um, because it is a big difference. So moving along, 45, 19, dark faces. So this is where the Sam Frodo and now Gollum, they're making their way through the marshy area and you can see the dark, the dead people in the water, in the water. I'm sorry, not dark faces, dead faces. It's called dead faces. I gave it two boxes of popcorn. 
the detail and the 3D-ness of this it really blew me away. Uh, looking into the water is always a challenge in real life or in a movie especially because the interaction between the water and the camera, it's, it's very difficult because the camera is going to want to focus on different things, right? Because if you've ever worked with a camera or your phone, you're trying to focus on something, try to focus on something on a windshield and not focus on the thing behind it, right? Well, it's the same with the top of the water. And they pulled this off beautifully here. Um, think of going up to a water, you know, a pond and you put on polarized sunglasses, you can see through because you're taking that top layer away, that reflections are going away. The way they pulled this off here is just unreal because it is very hard to pull this off with a camera in a movie. But now they, they did this, it's it, watching the scene over and over 45 minutes and 19 seconds, two boxes of popcorn, because just what they pulled off here, you really feel like that 3d, like you could almost put your hand into that water because you have tons of detail in the reflections on, on the top of the water, but you're also getting a ton of detail in the, the dead people under the water. Really, really nice version. Really nice cut here. Uh, the 1080p version, it's not even close. You don't get that same sense of 3D-ness as I, I just think I just coined the term, 3D-ness. But it, it's pretty cool. Play it out for a while. The scene plays on for quite a bit. The picture I'm using in the video time is stamped at 46.19. Uh, but I started this scene at 45.19. So it, it plays on for a bit. But yeah, definitely, definitely check that one out. Moving right along, I really like this scene, the glowing ring, the pictures I'm using on YouTube, don't do it justice, but you'll know exactly, I just use it as a reference and go to the scene at 4735, glowing ring, Frodo's lying down and he's caressing the ring, but check out the ring. If you look closely at the ring, you'll see that it's glowing under his hand, okay? Like the skin on his hand is yellow and the entire scene is pretty much monochromatic. It's pretty much all washed out. But it, looking at this on your screen, now, I wonder what this looks like even on a 45-inch or a 55-inch TV. It's probably not as noticeable. My screen's 110, so that, that ring and the glowing on his hand is pretty big. So it's a little bit easier to tell. And like I said, the pictures I'm using on YouTube don't do it justice. But you can see on his hand, the yellow is just so much more vibrant than the rest of the picture because it's a fairly monochromatic picture. The green in the background just over Frodo's head is, you know, it's there. But this scene here, it's it's very, very cool how they did this. And also check out the sound in this scene as well. There's a really nice low rumble with each caress of the ring, very low. You can feel it, great feel to it, but it, it goes along as he's caressing the ring. You can really feel that, that bass come in from underneath you. Really, really nice. Really enjoyed that scene. Moving along. Oh boy, here we go. We have at 49 minutes and 40 seconds, Fell Beasts. I had to look it up. I didn't know what they were called. I didn't read the books, but this gets three box of popcorns. All right, kids, ladies and gentlemen, get your overheads warmed up and your subwoofers ready. For the first time you see this, you are led to believe the Nazgul is following Sam, Frodo, and Gollum. And you think, the first time I saw it, you think they're still on the horses, but they pull back and we're introduced to the fell beasts. Each flap of the wings on this beast is a bass note that reverberates through you like the wind is pushing down on you and that's what i'm saying like your overheads are absolutely engaged here and the subwoofers are absolutely engaged it's and this is what's so much fun about having a system like this whether you have subwoofers or not or you have full channel speakers but there is no way that your overheads can pull off this bass but it sounds like it's coming from over you. It sounds like all this bass is coming from over your head. And I, it's like you feel like, oh, did I feel a breeze? When you're not. But it just, it's so, so good. And 
especially when they go under the boat, you're underneath the shrubs or whatever with Sam and Frodo and Gollum in that thing is flying around over you and it's moving around the room it, it's uh, exactly 50 minutes in one second is when the fell beast flies over you from left rear to front right and your room vibrates like crazy with deep bass it is awesome and how it's directional over your head absolutely stunning this is definitely a scene bring people into your room sit them down Put a seatbelt on and have a blast because this and crank it up to reference level. You know, it, it's just a great, great sound scene. And you also, oh, by the way, the high pitched pitch. Ugh, I can't even say that. Ugh, the high pitched screaming along with that bass rumble, too, because the fell beast does that. I won't even attempt to do their ah, but the scream, but that at like that hurts. It's it goes so high that it actually hurts your ears. It's really really well done. Great great scene. Moving on, fifty one forty five. We get to talking trees. Really cool and fun scene. Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli are in the forest, and you can you can hear all the trees around you, and they start to wake up. There's creaking sounds, there's ticking, and it it's there's uh whale sounds. It sounds like what whales are talking, but it's like the trees, the woo. All of that going on around you, all around your room. It's just really, really cool. And it's just a fun scene, especially after that fell beast scene. This is nice, distinct, discreet sounds going on all around you, putting you right into that forest with them. Really, really nice scene. Moving along, we're at 53 minutes and 55 seconds. The Balrog battle, two boxes of popcorn here. And this is, Gandalf describes how he survived his battle with the Balrog, basically bringing us back to the opening scene of the movie where we had we saw the battle, but now he's describing it to, I believe it's, um, uh, oh, uh, Aragorn, uh, Legolas, and Gimli. Sorry. Uh, so this scene, full of engagement, from all the way around the room, full sound, awesome bass, an awesome example of HDR as well. All the highlights, the rain slash snow. I think it's snow. Maybe it's ash. I don't know. But that stuff's going by your screen. You have fire. You have lightning, as you can see from the picture that I'm using on YouTube. Uh, set against the blackness and the smoke. So many different shades. It just, it is a stunning, stunning picture. I actually watched this scene accidentally. I hit play, but the lights were still on the room in the room when I was going back to do a review at the time. And I was like, wow, this doesn't look near. Turn the lights off. You're like, bam, so good looking. Such a great scene. Cause like I said, the HDR on this scene, all of the shades from, from bright to black, a great, great scene to watch over and over. All right. Another one with three boxes of popcorn. We get uh, at one hour, three minutes and 40 seconds marching. This is a great audio scene. Frodo, Sam, and Gollum looking in at the gate of Mordor. We start with the army approaching, and the bass is awesome. It's, I mean, it's not super loud, but you can feel it in the floor and in your seat, and you just get that marching noise, and you're like, boom, boom, boom. here they come. What I can't remember the name of that army. It's not orcs. It's a different army. But then you can hear a loud blowing horn in the background, and that's pretty cool. But then it goes to seeing the horn on the screen and it starts the horn very loud. Once they go to the shot of the horn being on the screen, it really gets loud. Now it's not in the background. Now it's front and center on your screen loud. But then it does one of my favorite things. It pans off to the right. And so that that horn slides slightly off to not slightly. It just goes away off to the right. But the volume stays the same, but it pans over and goes off screen to the right. Really, really nice. But then your room starts crazy, a crazy vibration in your room as we're looking at them opening the gates. And they have those. I, I don't know the name of the, the monsters or whatever, those giants that are pushing the gate open. And it's. Tons of discrete sounds going on all around you, but the base of that gate being opened, it sounded like the front wall of my theater was being ground open, like it was on a pivot, just like this gate. 
and it's like the bass it just it was awesome awesome feel but all the while we're getting crystal clear dialogue with everything going on in your room here, you get in crystal clear dialogue, some of which is whispering because you have Sam and Frodo and Gollum. They're sitting there and they're trying to be discreet up on the hill, but you're hearing stuff and it's very quiet. It's pretty, pretty cool. And you even get at the very beginning of the scene, you get another nice pan of Gollum because he doesn't move, but the camera shifts and Gollum's voice trails off to the left. Very nice. Very cool. At one hour, 20 minutes and one second, you can round it off if you'd like. Poison. Great bass in this scene as Gandalf wields his staff and you get, it's, he's, we're about to try and get the poison out of Theoden. That's right. Theoden. Okay. But the picture is awesome. Okay. The bass was nice. And like we said, bass is awesome throughout this movie. Really good. But the transformation that Theoden goes through here from being possessed by uh, uh, Saruman, being possessed by Saruman, and then he goes into being healthy again. It's an amazing transformation. We start off with uh, on YouTube. You see this picture and it's in 4K with all of the HDR glory, everything. It looks so good with the, you know, 2020 color gamut. Oh, it is disgusting you can feel that crust on his face you can see the depth of those wrinkles the nose it's oh it's just so good the milky white eyes it's ugh. it was so great i'm looking at it. if you're looking on youtube it's so gross looking but seeing it on that screen seeing it at a 110 inch screen it looked so good so sharp nothing should look nothing that bad should look that good and then it starts to progress when we start to pull it out and the progress that they made here with the special effects, it looks so good. This is, the, if you're on YouTube, this is the mid, kind of the middle of the progression and he looks so nice. It didn't look fake at all. They did such a great job with this restoration that it really is quite believable that this is actually going on. And then if, on YouTube, you can see this final expression where he's now healthy again. It just was really, really nice. Go back and forth and it doesn't look like, I remember seeing this and I didn't actually AB this on the 1080p, but on I do remember see, seeing this in 1080p and thinking, all right, yeah, a little bit of special effects, kind of like superimposed, much smoother, much better looking this time. Very, very well done. This is where this restoration, they took advantage of the technology and it actually improved on the special effects here. At one hour, 22 minutes and 27 seconds, grasp the sword. And obviously Gandalf is saying, you know, you'll feel better once you grasp your sword as well. But Theoden pulls his sword from its sheath and the sound, however subtle, but we love that, of metal scraping pans off the screen. Um, it pans off the screen. Sorry about that. You, as it's pulled from its sheath, you can hear the metal scraping. But he's pulling and your the camera stays on his hand. So the where the uh, how do I describe this? Because I have a picture on the thing and it's just a picture of his hand holding the sword. But what it is, is it, his hand grabs it and you, the camera stays on his hand. But the sound where the sword is meeting the sheath that's what the opening of the sheath that pans off to the side so the sound goes with it which is crazy it's crazy that level of detail it, it's it's a lot of fun watch it again one twenty one hour 22 7 22 minutes and 27 seconds grasp the sword really really cool and very very accurate for again something that doesn't really have to be but for us it is, and we really appreciate it. At one hour, 40 minutes, and 32 seconds. This is the scene I mentioned earlier where Gollum, I think, this they did him so well, it actually brought me into the scene. So this is where Gollum versus Smeagol back and forth, go back and forth. So he's talking to himself, 
but we're getting Gollum on the left side of the screen it with a kind of an angry face. And then you have Smeagol on the right side of the screen with a more like worried face where like he's trying to be the good guy, trying to do the right thing. This is a great scene to look and try to critique, try to look at the special effects and how it's wrong. I thought I saw something. I thought I looked and saw like, oh, there's a halo around his head. That doesn't look right. That's look at that. They did. a. Oh, wait, that's not a bad job. That's his hair. Because what check it out and how it falls down behind his ears and goes behind his shoulders. You'll see very clearly that that is the, the fine hairs on the top of his head. It looks like it might be a halo of a cutout of special effects, but it's not because as the scene plays out, it actually matches. It's a very, very good scene. Very good job of special effects here. I thought the lighting was correct. His, the tint on him matched the background. Again, it's a lot easier to do because you're not, you don't have the feet placed. You don't, you're not really looking at the shadows there. So it doesn't look like it's that wrong, you know, image on the, on the background. So I found this scene to be even more engrossing because I was doing that. I was leaning forward. I was more engrossed in what he was saying. I was paying attention to the scene even more. Part of it trying to check for flaws, but the other part was the first time I watched it, I was like, this is just really good, really brings you right into the scene. So definitely check that one out. Maybe you don't like it. I thought it was fantastic. And again, on a giant screen like this, it really just sucked me right in and checking out, like, like I said, thought I found a flaw, but that's his hair. Very fine hairs, as you can see, but that's his hair. Last scene we will talk about, and that scene is at one hour, 45 minutes and four seconds, ambush. Another great scene for sound. Arrows flying from everywhere as this group of men. I can't remember the name of the army, but they're, they ambush the this army, and Frodo, Sam, and Gollum are hiding from them. And great bass, great sound but the arrows going all over the room, the whole room's vibrating. You have the elephants stomping and growling. You have everything going on. Just a great way to wrap up this part, you know, part one. Oh, men screaming. It's the whole room is engaged. And then of course we see as the movie plays out that the, the group of men, because they're not elves, they're not, they're men. This group of men take Sam and, Frodo because Gollum has slipped away but it's just an absolutely great way to end this I gave it one box of popcorn it was very very engaging scene and uh really enjoyed it really enjoyed it so next month we'll be doing Lord of the Rings part two two towers part two and we'll wrap that up with Jeff from HD report that'll be a lot of fun looking forward to that and I think I think that's a fun way to do it too, because I, you know, I'll break down the first half, but then it would get a little redundant, but now Jeff and I can come back and we'll talk about what we thought of the whole movie and in the second half of the movie as well. So really looking forward to that, but that'll do it for this week. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you to Patreon supporters, Graham C, Andrew J, Carl R and Brian M. And also all 11 of my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much. Really appreciated it. Up to 11 now. And also on Twitter, Dean Matthews, Michael Maddox, and Jason Kennedy. Thank you very much for following. Enjoying the conversations. Jason, I followed Jason and I saw that his in his bio, Jason had a line. Uh, I have detailed files, which I had to follow. Some Anybody with a Terminator 2 reference like that. A little obscure if you don't know Terminator 2. I love little things like that. And uh, I gave him a follow and he followed me back. I just, we were talking about something else, but we didn't follow each other. So really appreciate that. Love little things like that. So that will do it for this week. Thank you everybody for listening. If you're on YouTube, thank you for watching. If you're, please go to YouTube. If you're there, please hit subscribe. Really appreciate that too. I will be back next week. And uh, until then, go push play. Hey Fred. This has been a Hey Fred production. 
with theme music by Jeff Bernhardt and Throne Vault Productions.